Hayes, it's Laurel from Arts Nursery and today we're going to talk about some perennials, some of my favourite perennials for sun. So we're here at the Pollinator Garden in Progress. We're working on this. Some parts we like, some parts we're working on. Um, and I'm here to show you a couple of plants that uh, work really, really well in a sunny perennial garden or a pollinator garden. So this is the first one. This is Napita or cat mint and the variety is Walker's Low. And it's a little guy in a four inch pot, but I want you to know that these guys were this size when I planted them last year. With perennials, you can start little and they fill out quite quickly and easily, especially these guys. Um, beautiful fragrance to the leaves. Uh, the bees go crazy. Um, we have some really awesome bee photos uh, on the Nepitas. Uh, just a great border plant. I have them in my garden. When they bloom, I cut them back, they'll rebloom again. You can just have a lovely extended bloom season. Another favorite plant for a pollinator garden that the monarchs and morning cloak butterflies absolutely love is this plant. And in a four inch pot, it kind of looks like a giraffe of a perennial. You might be underwhelmed. But this is Centranthus ruber. The other name you might know it by is Valerian. And I'm going to show you, hopefully I'm not going to fly through here. Um, in our pollinator garden, it grows as a beautiful cluster. And again, last season, I started off with four inch pots. These guys were just tiny guys. And the butterflies absolutely love this plant as a nectar plant. The next plant that I've got for a sunny border, a front of the border plant, is this beautiful. This is Origeron and Profusion is the variety. You can see that it'll start off in bud, opening to a bit of a pink, fading to a white, and it blooms right through the entire season. Um, with just a froth of daisy flowers. So I love having this at the front of the border, spilling, spilling over rockeries, um, spilling over to the pathway or steps. They will self-sow, uh, so they'll come up again year after year, uh, often not where you planted them, so be a little patient with these guys, but they are just a really fun perennial to have in your garden. Another favorite of mine, that I have in my garden and right now it looks a little bit like chives, garlic chives and actually it is a flowering garlic. The flowers on this baby, this Millennium Allium, last so long um, and the plant takes very little care. I've got it growing uh, beside my driveway on a slope. Um, I forget to water that section often and it just stays as a little chunk of a plant and the flowers lasted on, uh, and I'm not exaggerating, for about a month and a half. And then the remnants of the flowers looked really quite good. So I think I got about two and a half months out of that perennial looking really good. Bees go crazy for this. Um, it's just a really beautiful sort of icy purpley blue uh, flower. So just a great little tidy border specimen. And another plant that I absolutely love for the pollinator garden is yarrow. And it's just a glorious, glorious plant. This one is called Desert Eve and it's Achillea milfolium, Desert Eve. And for a hot, sunny summer border that you want to attract butterflies um, and bees too, it's just quite an interesting color. So um, this may be today's impulse purchase for me. It's just a great fun. It happens at this place. It happens. Um, another great plant for sunny perennial border. Um, even a shrub border that you want some late summer color is this beautiful black eyed Susan. And this is Goldstrom black eyed Susan. And it looks like a lot of lettuce now, but 
it's really important when you're building your perennial border i'll move this out of your way when you're building your perennial border you want to get things that are not all in color right when you do your purchase um, you want to be patient this is an absolutely glorious late summer color it starts blooming end of July beginning of August and will go right through until the frost knocks it down um, and it's just it, it's absolutely lovely um, it's a it's a good spreader so you'll be shaving off chunks of this plant to give to your friends and neighbors bees do love this plant as well so this is rudbeckia uh, and my last plant is a useful plant this is monarda and it's be you be happy it has a bloom to it and the leaves have that wonderful earl gray fragrance so you can absolutely use it to make um, a bit of earl gray tea if you want to experiment um, don't use a quarter cup like i did otherwise it tastes like you're dr drinking straight perfume but um, the bees and other pollinators absolutely love the flowers on this plant. It's sort of a mid-season bloomer. Um, and again, you start off with little pots and then you end up with lovely, great big, full perennial plants. So be patient and make sure you stagger your planting so that you have different seasons of color and interest. Thanks for visiting. See you later.